day probably comes at a good time for us, obviously, coming off a, a difficult loss. Uh, got a lot to clean up, lots to work on. Um, certainly banged up, probably like most teams uh, this time of year. Um, you know, we're certainly in the same boat. We have quite a few guys nicked up. So hopefully you get a little time to rest up and uh, also for us to take a good look at ourselves, see the areas, um, you know, where we're having success and areas where we're falling short and do a good job of uh, taking taking a good look at ourselves and try to improve as a football team uh, this week um, along with getting ahead on future opponents. So we have a lot of work to do and um, um, look forward to getting back on the practice field here this afternoon. For questions for Coach, please press 1-0, and we'll begin with Steve Moulton at WZZN. Hey, Coach. Hope you're doing well today, sir. Thanks. Doing good. Wanted to ask about J.J. Weaver. I noticed he was just named a semifinalist for the Jason Witten Collegiate Man of the Year. Tell me a little bit about what he adds to your roster, Coach. Yeah, J.J.'s just a great young man. He's been with our program for for some time, and, um, you know, he's one of those uh, players and people that you're proud of because he's been through some tough things and faced adversity in football, uh, had his injuries and, and different things, and then in life, and uh, has persevered through that, pushed through that, and has uh, been successful. And so we're, we're very proud of him and the, and the leadership that he's shown. Having played both Georgia and Missouri, how, how well do you think Missouri – is uh, I know that's going to happen here in a couple of weeks, but how well do you think Missouri could stack up to Georgia, you think, Coach? Well, I think, you know, I, I just have a lot of respect for Missouri. I knew that. I said that last week coming in. I know Coach Drink and, and his team is always resilient and play uh, very, very hard, and um, they've been very efficient, um, you know, with, with their passing game. Their quarterback and receivers are playing at a very high level, so – I'm not into making predictions about other team. I have great res- great respect for both of those teams and both coaches, and um, you know, so I'll stay away from making a prediction. I just uh, credit them the way they played against us and come in here on the road and be down 14 nothing and still battle their way all the way back and take care of business. So credit to them. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Next is David Pascal, the Chattanooga Times Free Press. <clears throat> hey, Mark, I know you, your teams have always been some of the cleanest, most structured teams in the league, and I know you said after Saturday's game you were going to go back and, and look at some stuff. I, you're averaging, as you know, you're averaging more penalty yards than you have in, in your years there. Have you had deep enough time to kind of self-scout and kind of figure out what has led to that? Yeah, it is. It's um, it's very disappointing and uh, really no excuse for it. Um, to have this type of penalties, if I'm not mistaken, either last, you know, the last couple of years, the bottom lines would have been either one or two or three, top of the league and least penalized teams, and uh, right now we're the most penalized, and so uh, we're not doing a very good job. But you know, some penalties are going to happen, some aggressive penalties are going to happen that that you, you you know that you know it's just going to happen during playing ball, but uh, but some of it is just completely unacceptable and it's selfish and it's just not disciplined, and so. You know, we need the accountability, and, you know, sometimes it's tied to competition, and, and uh, you know, and so we gotta we got to just uh, do a better job of coaching it and, and have better control. Like and you I know said, it's, it's not, not going to – yeah, sorry, but, you know – No, no, I was just going to – you it, know, I was going to follow with just kind of – you know, you've got the um, open date, and I know it's not ideal to come off an open date after a couple of losses, and when you turn the page to Tennessee next week – how much, uh, you know, how, does that help that you have a nice uh, rivalry game waiting at the end of this open date to kind of get these guys right back up? I, I hope so. I, I do, you know, I was, you know, I guess, you know, in a way, like, I guess, pleased with the start with our kids' attitude a week ago. I know when you take a loss, that's hard to say. But after, you know, the you know the two losses in a row, you go down to Georgia and, and – I already talked about that, but you get you get your butts beat pretty good. And, you know, our team, I thought our coaches and our team did a good job of responding last week, and we came out, we came energized, you know, and executed at times. But there's a fine line between success and failure. And sometimes, you know, two, three, four plays define a game, and you don't always know which ones they are. 
And uh, I think that was the case last week. Again, credit Missouri. They made the plays at critical moments. They made some big plays and uh, flipped the script on us, you know, from, from you know, coming out and, and having good, great control at the beginning of the game. But it's a four-quarter game, and I thought we did some good things. And so, you know, hopefully our team will respond the same way. We've started this week that way, where they've come out and, and had a great attitude and they're tuned in and trying to concentrate on us and trying to be a better football team and practice hard.